Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again for another Kickstarter critique, and today we're going to be checking out Tinner's Trail, a game by Martin Wallace, a board game by Martin Wallace, redeveloped for the modern era by Alley Cat Games. But first and foremost, thank you so much for joining and taking this journey with you, and I really do appreciate every time I get on here. I love going on here. I love doing these segments, and I'm glad to see that people are enjoying them. So this launched today. The first thing I want to say is, Right now, I don't know if you noticed this, this is the most popular game, not just in tabletop games, but in all of games, so big ups right there, and also, I wonder if there's this thing now, so Tuesday is has always been kind of the day that you're supposed to launch a Kickstarter, if you just Google that right now, most of them will say, Tuesday's the best day to launch your Kickstarter, however... Uh, I feel like with so many humongous games coming out on Tuesday, just on a consistent basis, and you can't possibly know all the games that are going to launch, because sometimes they just kind of pop out of nowhere as well, uh, I feel like launching on Monday, when normally Kickstarter is kind of slow, is, is not a bad idea if you're a smaller publisher. Now, Alicad Games, I do believe, has a whole bunch of Kickstarters under their belt, 13 created. Uh, so I'm wondering if this is through, you know, testing and testing and tinkering and figuring out the perfect formula for when to launch a game for them specifically. Uh, I'd be interested to know the method behind the madness, but they've already raised double their funding goal. Spectacular. I'm a big Martin Wallace fan. You got the Golden Geek nominee. Love seeing that. Uh, Ludotech Ideal. I don't know what that one is. And then the seal of approval. I hate the taste of seal of approval. You know, I don't hate the seal of approval, but I hate when people like spotlight it. It's like, like, no, the seal of excellence is excellent. The seal of approval just means like, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's not terrible. Like, I never get that. But anywho, that's just me. I'm a proud miner, like my father before me, and his father before him. Things are changing round here, though. Our mining company's just been bought by a bigger one, and the mining's becoming big business. Seems like every day they're building a new mine, and trains and big boats are getting more common here, too. Maybe one day I'll set off on one of those big boats. I hear there's an handsome wage to be made for skilled miners overseas. For now, though, I think I'll do what I know best and keep walking the Tinnis Trail. Tinnis Trail. Wow. A reprint. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, I gotta stop here. This looks, from the front, from the cover, let's be honest, this looked like a very dry euro. And most likely, it probably is a very dry euro. And I love dry euro, so I'm not saying that in a negative way, but I'm saying the way they did that video got me thematically interested in the game. So top notch, that first 40 seconds, I, I you know, I'm, 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 I'm in here because I see Martin Wallace, I see it's on the top of the list, but then you, you wow me in the first 40 seconds, like, yeah, that would be an interesting time to be alive, you know? What, what was this person's life like? Like, what were their career paths like? I love how they did that. I think they did a great job there of immediately getting me inter interested in the game uh, for, for a dry Euro. So top notch. Of the 2008 classic board game, designed by Martin Wallace which has now been remastered for the modern tabletop. I like how they did that. That was very, very subtle, where it was just the, the, the dude waving, and then it said remastered for 2020, and then it just added all the extra color in the background into the picture. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's like, okay, so this isn't the same game. If I already have Tinner's Trail, this is going to be better than the original Tinner's Trail. This new edition increases Ooh. the player count to one to five players, and the game features increased strategy and less luck, Ooh. while still keeping the best of the original design. Redeveloped by Alicat Games, in partnership with Martin Wallace, we're proud to present this ultimate version of Tinner's Trail, that also includes two brand new expansions. I, I really like what they did there. Um, so they pretty much just appealed to everybody there. They're like, if you like Martin Wallace, don't worry. This is still, uh, he's helping us with it. He has helped us every step of the way. So you're still getting all that Martin Wallace goodness. But at the same time, there's a whole bunch of new stuff. You know, I'm assuming the five player, the solo, whatever it may be. Uh, and now they're hopefully they're going to go into good detail about what this stuff is. Like, what is new? But that being said, I, I'm a little bit, I, I don't... I still have no idea how to play the game, and maybe I'm hoping they're not going too much into what's new when I still don't know what's old. Because I think most people would probably in the, I, I didn't know this game existed, or I don't know how to play this game, category. The Arsenic expansion features the new resource of Arsenic, which carries great rewards at a high cost. 
and the emigration expansion sees your miners travel to distant lands, taking their skills with them to give you benefits back home in Cornwall. This new addition also includes an innovative solo mode and vastly improved art and graphic design. This remastered version of Tinner's Trail is one you can't afford to miss. Back to Kickstarter today and be the first to experience Martin Wallace's remastered Tinner's Trail. Wow, you can't miss this. Be the first to show your friends. <laughs> like They are really... Uh... I don't know how I feel about that. I, I just, it makes me laugh here again. All right, so what do we got going on? 13 created, 110 back, nice warm security blanket. Member of the community, one person. Oh, I always say this, like, you get a whole bunch of people working on your Kickstarter. Even if it's, like, little tiny things, it just takes some stress off you. So we're seeing a bunch of games here, a bunch of games funded, looking good. Lots of, lots of good stuff. A lot of success, and it just looks like this is just another continuation of that success. I feel very comfortable backing this game already. Boom. Oh, look at that. Our biggest campaign, Dice Hospital, raised over $200,000. So they know what they're doing, and I say to myself, I know Dice Hospital. I have heard of that game. Uh, base game, $33, $44. Bam. Love it. Good. Looks good. Um, solid. And that's what I want, you know? Uh, I, maybe I would have liked to know a little bit more about what the game was about, but they piqued my interest enough with the expansion content. Like, oh, cool, I can go overseas now, and then I could learn things overseas, but then I could take it back to when I come back to the United States or wherever that may be, and then I could use those special abilities, but that's that's probably going to take me a while to go over here and go back there, so then it becomes a balancing act of, ooh, how late in the game do I actually want to go do it? That's what I'm imagining in my head, and I like that. I like that a lot, and I, I feel like that was a very well-done video. Uh, good components highlighted, looks good, right down to the price. Martin Wallace is known for his Euro experiences. In fact, Tinner's Trail is considered one of his more classic designs, so I'm excited for this new edition. That's not a quote. Like, I don't think they quote. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it, Martin Wallace is known for his Euro experiences. Fact. Okay, so they're providing credibility to the designer. Okay, in fact, Tinner's Trail is considered one of his more classic designs. That's the word there. What does that mean? Classic designs. When I think of classic, I don't think of good. You know, maybe maybe you do. I don't know. Like, Monopoly's an old classic. Is it? No, it's... I don't know. I'm so excited for this new edition. I just don't particularly like that quote that much. Uh, as the quote to be there. It doesn't It doesn't get me riled up about the game. Like, give me somebody to be like, this is... Martin, you know, the, the original is my most favorite game of all time, or it's one of my favorite Martin Wallace games, and now this is going to blow the, blow the freaking water away. You know, uh, ooh, looks good on the board, though. Great table presentation. I like this. like this a lot. Then the zoom in, really nice. And I love the colors. Like, that color right there. How many people look at that color and say, I don't see that color in board games very often, and I like that color. That was just me. The new edition of Sears Tale is a reprint of the critically acclaimed 2008 game by Martin Wallace, which has been developed and upgraded in partnership with Alley Cat Games. Award-winning game design. Dice Tower Seal of Approval. I don't care. Like, I don't... Let me know in the comments below. That's what I love about this interactive stuff. Like, let me know in the comments below or in the chat. Like, do you care when you see the Seal of Approval? When I see the Seal of Approval, it honestly says to me, oh, so it's not great. Because I see the seal of approval so much everywhere. You know, but let me know what you think about that. That's more on the seal of approval itself. Uh, it's just why there's too many good games. Why why we get a good game when, when you could potentially get a great game? Golden Geek, best games, board game nominee. This is all good stuff. I like all that stuff. All that stuff is great. Uh, I don't like the Dice Tower seal of approval there. But I understand why the Dice Tower moves the needle. Uh, so there you go. Auctions, dual-use cards, time track. I like it going right into the mechanisms. I say, I like auctions. I love dual-use cards. And I, uh, I'm indifferent on the time track. So cool. What's in the box here? This is nice. Contains over 300 individual components. One large game board. Four development boards. Nice. So this is going to be your own little personal area, hopefully. A rule booklet, an auction marker, three custom dice. Lots of different pieces. Okay. This is looking good, uh, especially when we factor in stretch goals, baby. 50 tin cubes, 50 water cubes, 50 copper cubes, 30 mines, lots of stuff. Like, boom, I already feel like we're into stretch goal, Terry, just because of how much stuff that's packed into the box. I hope it has a good organizer. That, uh, that I hope, is a stretch goal that you are looking into, because when I see this, I get excited, but at the same time, I say, oh, I don't want to have all these in little baggies, and I don't want to, you know. Okay, 
Tangent House. The mining theme comes through not only in the gameplay, but also in the components themselves. They all enhance the experience so well. I like that quote way better. I do. I personally like Man vs. Maple over Tantrum House, but that's a more personal opinion type of thing. But this quote itself, I like that quote better. It gets me more excited. Uh, what's changed since 2008? Great, great, great. Reduce randomness. Love those words. Tinner's Trail, the expanded edition. Okay, so this is probably going to be where the overwhelming majority of people uh, are going to. And hopefully this contains everything from the base game, too many expansions, and all stretch goals. Oh... So the base game does not include the expansion stuff. Hmm. I don't like that. I, 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 like, that just seems odd. Well, I, I'm going to guess that maybe the expansion stuff will come... Uh, the, stre the stretch goal stuff will come on the side. I, I don't know. How does that work? I, I just... It feels odd. It feels odd. But hey, you know, it, it's not a deal breaker. It's just something that... It just seems odd to me. I don't see that too terribly often, I don't think. Canadians everything for the base game. Too many expansions and all stretch goals. The Arsonist expansion. Very cool. Arsenic Cubes, Market Board, Immigration Expansion, Boo, yeah, that's the one that got me excited. 20 Miners, 4 per player, 8, are we talking, are we talking worker placement here? Are we talking area control? What is that? I want to know, because I love Martin Wallace. The Expanded Edition will be exclusive to Kickstarter backers for three months. Okay. I mean, they're here nor that or that. I know a lot of people feel very strongly about that. I've never personally cared. It's like, I, I mean, I want the game. I don't know, because it's like, I want the game. I don't really, like, why would I not want other people to enjoy the game? I don't know. Maybe it's because you take the risk of doing the pre-order when you don't really know if... I don't know. The expanded edition of Tinner's Trail comes with two brand new expansions, which add to Tinner's Trail with thematic new gameplay. These expansions require the base game to play and can be played alone or combined. They are also compatible with the Lord Wallace solo mode. Excellent connection. Excellent. Arsenic expansion, emigrate expansion, gameplay highlights. I like it. Area tiles new to this edition. Very cool. Dual use location cards new to this edition. Auctions and brinksmanship. This all looks good. Rewards, base game, okay, 44 bucks, 59 bucks. Oh, is that is that it? Is this going to be clean and clear? Oh, I love it when it's clean and clear. Stretch goals, cool. Kickstarter promo pack. What's in said promo pack, he said. Uh, because that looks like one, two, three cards and one, two, three, four, five tiles? Because <laughs> that's a hell of a promo pack. Uh, maybe, maybe talk a little bit more about it. Maybe that's in the updates. Who knows? The custom-shaped score marker. Cool. And coming soon. Uh, hopefully coming relatively soon, because I believe they've... Yeah, they have blown... No, no, oh, okay. Wait, what's... I gotta look at the conversion. They have raised 20... Okay, so they're about to hit the $30,000 stretch goal. So they're... But then again, this just launched, and this is uh, this is probably really... Uh, they're probably pretty happy with what they got going on here. Prototype pictures. That's cool. I like how they mentioned that, because some people... Uh, we'll be like, why is the picture six down is not the same color as the picture in uh, the video? People will actually do that. I swear to you, that is a thing. Let's see. Very nice. Very good. Looks good. Great. Good. Download the rules. Let's check it out. Hoping for less than 20 pages. That's what I'm hoping for. 13! Wowie Maui, I love it. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, that is what a setup should look like it's so beautiful the components here the board and the setup there the instructions interweaved that's a page you know what you know here's what i want this is what i want take that page make this a stretch goal just take that page out and just give you an extra copy of that page i don't know because i wish more games had just something like this and so while the other person is reading the rules everybody else could be um setting it up based on this one page right here I really do think people would like that. Uh, so it looks good. Lots of pictures, illustrations, examples. Just excellent, excellent looking rule booklet. I want to read this rule booklet. I actively want to stop doing this and read this rule booklet to see what the game is about if I had a copy of the game. Uh, and the last page, oh, it's nothing. So 12 pages, great. Good stuff. Like it, like it, like it. Let's keep going. Haven't seen any videos. Hoping those get here soon. Download the print and play version. Nice warm security blanket. No chance in hell I'm ever going to do that. Tabletop simulator. Uh, there's, there's a higher layer of hell that I'm probably not going to do that. But still, the fact that it's there, and there are a bunch of people who do do that. Uh, I'm not poo-pooing on that. It's just, it's not personally for me with my computer. <laughs> uh, coming soon, play on tabletop simulator. All right, you might want to get rid of that. 
aim of the game. Or wait, is it is it coming soon? Or is it here? Coming soon. Oh, oh, it's not there. So this that's why that's not clickable. Um, I put that there. I mean, this one, obviously, uh, probably, I don't know. But I have that there. Aim of the game. Because, yeah, if I go there, I'm like, oh, if I am the tabletop simulator person, I'm like, oh, awesome, tabletop simulator. Click on it. What? What? Let's click. What? Let's click. Oh, coming soon. Maybe I forget about the game. Maybe I'm mad. Maybe I'm mad now at you because I was excited. Probably not, but who knows? Some people are weird. I'm weird. Each player represents a growing mining operation in the 19th century Cornwall, seeking to profit from the rich tin and copper deposits of the region. Over the course of the four round, players will build, mine, acquire developments, extract ore, sell their tin and copper, and invest in their proceeds to earn points. The player with the most points is the winner. Sounds good. This is, you know, all great stuff, but, I mean, just throw some videos here. Like, I know you have videos, because the original one, uh, I would uh, just, like... There we go. Bitters review. Very, 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 very. Pop them up. Pop them up. Move these bad boys up. Uh, preview. Let's take a look. Okay. So these aren't the reviews. I hope they have some of the reviews. Because most of these, let's be honest, I don't feel like most people are clicking on these. Uh, it's getting to the point now with a lot of the Kickstarter videos where it just feel like, uh, it's just more like an in-depth version. I actually like to, but then it, you can't do that with Kickstarter games a lot of times because most of the time there won't be reviews because the game's not out. But with a remastered edition, I would totally find the most glowing review or a couple of the most glowing reviews and just put them up there and maybe even highlight the things from the cons that, that you have improved. But but the lack of just like an actual review, I don't think is, is the best because overview, preview, preview, and nothing <laughs> whatever just board game just a board game all right pledge manager cool maybe what's the pledge manager we'll be using pledge manager to manage add-ons where they oh here's the add-ons oh they're games okay they're games with a what kickstarter edition with the hospital oh is that why they say the kickstarter exclusive edition is going to be for three months i bet you that's what it is uh okay okay i'm, I'm neither here nor there on that i mean that does kind of miss like, it, it, it kind of takes away that fear of missing out. That I think they were really pushing hard there, where they're like, be the first, don't miss this, type of thing. Uh, but hey, you know, that's marketing. Neither here nor there. Chocolate Factory, Cat Cafe, so if I want to add more games, cool. Simon's Cat, oh. Oh, yeah, okay, I was going to say, that was uh, that's a different company. Retailers, great game, by the way. Great kids game. Family game. We all for excellent rates for retailers in the world. Group pledges. Where's the shipping? Where's the shipping? Here we go. UK, four pounds. This is what I like. Yes, I see too many people not do this. Change the currency for the people. <laughs> I saw one a couple days ago, and it was like, it was all done in pounds. And I was like, D just take the extra time. Like, go to Google. Google will give you the answer in, like, 30 seconds just how much is four pounds in the united states eight to twelve dollars it is just uh, something like that and then what they also did here is what i say all the time in these things give people a ballpark if you don't have an exact price range give people the ballpark because how much more comfortable the people from the united states feel backing now that they know oh it's eight to twelve dollars even if it's twelve dollars i don't care even if they lie and it's thirteen dollars i really don't care that much okay but when you don't have anything there people are like oh maybe it's 20 you know they, they, you just Put that security blanket on your backers, and I like it. All money are U.S. dollars. Okay. We are also subsidizing shipping and absorbing some of the cost of each shipment. Cool. Looks good. Looks good. Estimated timeline. You know, all this is all the due diligence stuff. This is all the stuff that the big companies do to, like, uh, let me rephrase that. Not the big companies, but the companies that have done enough Kickstarters to know what to do, do. Where they just, you know, it's, it's just added extra, like, oh, cool. Just, there's a whole bunch of people working on this game. Uh, Kickstarter, so we got the $43, I'm assuming this is going to be the whale, the one that most people have, 645 as opposed to, I'm going to guess, 37 22 wow, I overestimated, yeah, I don't want, I don't want that one, the page, oh, this is the retail edition, uh, yeah, that's the one nobody's, nobody wants, uh, just, just because, you know, I shouldn't say that, I should not say that, because 22 people do, but I don't, I don't understand it, like, it's, it's such a, it's not that big of a price difference. But hey, you know, everybody's got different budgets. But yeah, okay, expanded edition of Tinner's Trail, all Kickstarter exclusive content, all like Stretch Gold, exclusive period for backers. It looks good. It looks like a very well-ran Kickstarter. The video did a great job. Uh, a couple things, I would totally, you know, maybe, now that you're hitting the Stretch Goals, and it looks like if you if you catch this lightning in a jar, catch the Stretch Goals, and uh, catch even more of them. But let's see. Let's see if I can find one real quick. YouTube. 
Tinner's Trail Review. Let's, I'm sure there's a positive one that you can just pop in. There we go. Oh, that's Tom Vass 11 years ago. Bam. Uh, but I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? Like, it wouldn't be hard to add one. And I feel like I would much rather watch a review than a preview 100 times out of 100 because I can listen to both the pros and the cons and and based on how they give me the pros and cons, kind of assess if that game is going to be for me. Whereas with a preview, it's, it's just not the same. It's just like, here's the game! It's like, okay, well, there's that cool auction phase. Like, what, what did you like about the auction phase? What did you dislike about the auction phase? And then uh, based on what they say about the either... Because they might hate the auction phase. They're like, oh, say it's so frantic and chaotic. And I might say, oh, that's all me. That's my thing. I love that. Uh, so I just find them so much more useful than a preview in nearly every situation. Now, granted, you have all the new stuff, but let's see. Comments, updates. It's first day. Don't expect too many updates. Fun in less than two hours. First stretch goal revealed. Join us tomorrow for a Q&A with designer Martin Wallace. Ooh, like it. Very cool. Drive in that engagement. Because, yeah, Tuesday, there's probably going to be some behemoth that jumps out here and makes a million dollars and does miniatures. Uh, so, yeah. Keep people engaged, because you're the number one game. Let's check out the comments. Looking good, looking good. Lots of responses, hopefully. Hi, I can't find any information regarding player number, age, and time. Could you help me? Are there some chances to get a French version during the campaign? The player number is, is right there. <laughs> I, can't, I can't respond, because I'm not a backer, but it's right there. Um, but hey, if he can't... Okay. I don't, I don't want to... Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's also right there. It's... <laughs> I mean, I can't, uh, uh, so, like, moving on, <laughs> moving on, um, I'm not gonna put that one on Alley Cat Games, I really hope one of the SG has to do with Cornish pasties, I know they are only depicted as part of the theme for one action, but it'd be really cool to get a 3D token, by the way, no language patterns, uh, partners, I was hoping to see, mo oh, okay, cool, yeah, uh, giving you ideas for potential stretch goals, and potential ideas and things that you could do in the stream of the Kickstarter. Because even if you just say, to reach out to the company now and say, hey, Maldito, we got this game. It's going to be popular. It's looking good. Would you like a, a piece of this? Like, I don't know exactly how the behind the scenes stuff works, but hey, why not? Uh, and, and this person right here, David Vicente, and you could, would be like, oh, that's awesome. They listened. And then you could respond right here and be like, David, we just reached out to them and we're now doing this and it's going to be covered in the next update. We're going to be, you know, and boom, everyone who's in the comment section is like, oh man, Alligat Games kicks ass. You know, <laughs> like that's, that's awesome. Are the rules for one player somewhere? I didn't see them in the rules PDF or may have missed them. They will sadly only get played solo, but I really love, uh, yes. So hopefully they respond to that and I'm sure they will. I'm sure they're, they're going through everything, but yeah, uh, that, that is a little bit of a red flag right there. If it's not actually in there, another Martin Wallace reboot. I'm in. Yeah. Like it all in Insta back for love of Martin Wallace. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for Spanish version possible. Yes, we were just finishing deals with our partner, Maldito! Oh, they already did! Yeah, there we go, there we go! You see? <laughs> I just talked about how you could potentially give backers that feeling, and you gave me that feeling! I love it! And at that point, at this point, honestly, I just need to scroll down. I see so much Alley Cat games that I know that they're running their social media and their comments. Uh, excuse me, not social media, but the comments. Uh, very, very well. And I want to see how many people are on the team. Let's go down there. So yeah, we got... Woo! Big team! Uh, you got the game designer, lead developer, and expansion designer. So he talked to him and figured out how he wants to do it. Uh, Co-founder, developer, project manager. Cool. Developer, project manager, illustrator, illustrator, graphic designer, communications director. Good on you, Ross. Co-founder and finance director, intern developers. The new addition to the team. After successful career as an actor and producer, he made the movie into board game industry in 2019. He made the move <laughs> in 2018 as general assistant for Stuff by Bez. Woo woo! Anything, sir, anything around Bez, I am so on board with. Bez is awesome. As a designer, the first game, Dice Cruise, will be published by Talent Strike Studio, and he was lead graphic designer. So, yeah, he's kind of like a, a jack of all trades sort of thing there. Very cool. Uh, you know, excellent. I uh, say this is a big Kickstarter. You know, it's already $39,000. Uh, Top notch stuff, and, and I definitely think they're probably going to break the $100,000 mark. I, I, and I think that's really indicative on the stretch goals, but it looks like they're going to be. Uh, the the Q&A, but I would move up the stretch goals. The Q&A with Martin Wallace, great idea. 
So I'm excited to see how well this Kickstarter does because I love seeing non-minis games <laughs> do really well because dang it, we got too many of them. But there you go. That is Titter's Trail, a game by Martin Wallace and Alley Cat Games. If it looks like it might be your cup of tea, be sure to check out that Kickstarter link down below. Tell them Bowers Game Corner sent you. Also, in the comments below, if there's ever a Kickstarter critique that you would like to see, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to hopefully get that one checked out if I have time to do it. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.